I feel like you have to be, you have to be really intentional about what you're doing because I don't know, you can stop doing things with intention. You'll wake up in three months and be like, what the hell did I just spend my last three months doing? I'm Lisa Billiou, and I went from housewife to co-founder of the billion dollar company Quest Nutrition and now president of Impact Theory. Our mission with this show is to empower you and all women to recognize that you really can become the hero of your own life. Welcome to Women of Impact. Today's Women of Impact pretty much came out of the womb, a business mogul. At the ripe old age of just 13, she began her very first online website design company. And by college, she started and grew her entrepreneur society to become the biggest entire United Kingdom, leading her to consult with the British government and become an ambassador for a $170 million fund to help young people get into entrepreneurship. She worked at Buckingham Palace, became CEO before turning 25, and launched the superfood supplement Oh My Glow that within the space of a year was shipping to over 60 countries and in over 200 stores throughout the UK. To most, that would have been the pinnacle of their career. That would have been the last chapter on the last page of the book of life. But today's guest isn't like most people. Driven to create impact, she rolled the dice on a little unknown Instagram page a page she connected to and believed in, a little page called Boss Babe. Well, in case you've been living in a cave with one-eyed Willie and have never been on Instagram before and heard of them, Boss Babe is one of the largest online communities of ambitious women and female entrepreneurs in the world. Growing faster than Hussein Bolt can run, the brand is currently sitting at a whopping 1.8 million on Instagram with close to 14 million Boss Babe hashtags. But it's way more than just a motivational page. It is a support system of sisters who have each other's backs. Outperforming Paula Abdul in a cheerleading competition, Boss Babe grab their pom-poms and cheer, celebrate and encourage women and entrepreneurship, proving that they are more about champion collaboration than competition. So please help me in welcoming the woman featured in Forbes Entrepreneur and Business Insider, the woman who took her company from $4,000 in revenue a month to $150,000 in the first 30 days, the boss babe herself and my fellow Brit and friend, Natalie Ellis. Welcome to the show, Thank gal. Thank you. All right. I'm going to get to it. You've been on a panel show where we've dealt with entrepreneurship. You've spoken about your past. So I'm not going to like touch upon that. So what I want to talk about is starting like the new year. So you built this incredible brand, absolutely mind blowing, but you always want to grow. You want to get to that next stage. So I actually have a quote from you. I see a lot of people trying to do all the things at once and when, and then wonder why they aren't getting traction. Strict focus has been a key ingredient to our success. All right, so you've got the new year. I'm sure you've got a million things coming at you, different opportunities. How do you isolate which ones make sense for your business? Um, and yeah, let's start from there. So the way that I've decided on where we're going in 2020 is I did a big graph of revenue, community growth, all of the different parts of kind of our 2019 strategy, see what works, what didn't. I really care about simplifying to amplify. So I will look at months where our net profit margin was really, really high and months where it was really low. Mm -hmm. When it was high, I want to know what we did so we can do more of that. When it was low, I want to get rid of some of that stuff and what we'll find is the things that really move the needle are when we're focused on one thing versus a little partnership here and a little collaboration here versus going all in on something so right now I've got all those graphs and I'm making all those notes and then I'm I've put the whole strategy for 2020 into just one page and that's on a presentation site so it's not even like an A4 page and it's just four bullet points it sums up what we're doing where we're going and everything comes back to that so once we've done that you know I'll present it to the team I, I take them away at the beginning of January and we'll just all like spend time diving in on that once we're clear on that we'll do Q1, Q2, Q3, mm. Q4 and keep it simple one thing that I'm actually going to do for 2020 though is half plan Q3 and not plan Q4 because what I've realized is the I know where I'm going, I know what I'm working towards, but the months that we leave space and we don't say, okay, our entire calendar is booked up now from January to December, there's no space for any new things, that's when we kind of put ourselves in a box and could say no to things that are actually going to really, really work out for us. So I like to leave it empty and feel into what's happening, see what it looks like at the end of Q1, see how it feels at Q2 and then start planning. 
That's amazing. So. Um, I love that so much. And you are the tactical queen in my eyes. Um, so a couple of questions. Is that how you dealt with your company when you weren't as big? Um, because let's say, for instance, you don't have the year's experience to reflect on. How would you advise somebody who, let's say, has taken the year and now this is their time where they're going to start? Um, how would you advise them to set a goal um, and then break it up? Would you still do the same thing in quarters? Like, what would that look like? Yeah, and I would still do a presentation as well, which might sound crazy to like a solo entrepreneur. Like, I'm presenting to myself. But I think it really helps keep you accountable. It, if you're just writing all this stuff and you're jotting things down, you can put so much detail, you can kind of go overboard. But presenting mm. something just makes you really distill it. You see the gaps in the data, like you see that. And I think it's a really good habit to get into because if your intention is to build a team, all of those habits are going to serve you. So I would still do it in that way. In terms of what would I reflect on, I think it's really about in terms of what works and what didn't it's a lot of tr like personality traits habits it's you know times when you might have done something you wish you didn't or didn't go all in where you wish you did and a lot of it comes from us we are like the biggest thing that stands in our way and so if i was planning for 2020 and one of my goals was to work out five times a week but in 2019 i didn't work out once probably not going to start saying okay in q1 i'm going to work out seven times a week i would say you know towards the end of 2020 i hope to be working out five times a week and then i would put maybe work out once a week in q1 twice a week in q3 and build it up that way because i think we can like we can have these massive goals which i think is great but if you really overwhelm yourself you know you're not going to do it if you start january like okay i've got to get up and work out seven days a week you're probably not going to do it yeah. going from zero and so do one thing that makes you win yeah and the sustainability of it right because you're 100 percent right so many people go into january first going all right i've just spent the last month like not working much not working out eating whatever i like health and business and now january i'm gonna stop doing this i'm gonna do this and everyone has that fire and usually it dissipates by end of January and February, everyone's forgotten about it. Yeah. Um, so I love that like step-by-step step doing it small. Um, so with your business, you said that you get a lot of people that come to you and ask you for things. How do you um, say no? How do you set those boundaries? Um, because there is that fear of maybe this is the opportunity I should take, right? People hear your story, they hear mine. And it's those moments where it's like, yeah, I just started a protein bar company. Everyone thought I was nuts and, you know, I didn't listen. But I started 10 other companies before and they all failed. So I just kept going. But for you, how would you, what would you advise on people to choose that path and then stay on that path? And then the follow-up question is, if they stay on that path, when should you assess if it's actually working or to stop and do something else? I think the key is like what you said, it's actually staying on that path. Like if someone's coming to you and just wants to collaborate with you on a quick two week thing and it's going to pull you away from what you're really working on, I would say it's a no. And so I would think about how it really fits into your long term goals. Like mm. you were saying, how can you sustain it? And then I would set milestones. So, OK, if I say yes to this, I would expect that by this month I've achieved this. This is what success looks like. A lot of people can get overwhelmed by the idea of metrics and data, mm -hmm. but essentially the, the metrics you wanna be tracking is what does success look like for me? So it can be as simple as I'm getting 10% more engagement on my posts or I'm feeling good, like whatever success looks like, set your milestones and then really assess and have those harsh conversations with yourself. Like, is this not working because it's not working? Is it not working because I'm not working? Like, mm -hmm. What is it? And then that self-assessment comes back as well. How do you do that self-assessment without denting your ego if you failed? Um, because I'm sure you've had many failures in your life because you're successful, so that means you have. Um, <clears throat> how do you make sure that you stay on the path, not let it dent your ego and keep going with the same amount of enthusiasm? Yeah, I've definitely failed a lot. And I think sometimes when you fail, you can look back and be like, I really thought I did everything that I needed to do and it still failed and you can't understand why in those situations it's just about giving yourself grace and being like let's get up and try again because I'm I believe myself to try again and I think in those situations you get to be like okay if I'm gonna do this again I'm gonna do it in this kind mm -hmm. of way I think in terms of getting back up when you do fail I think for for some people it comes very naturally they really, really believe in themselves and they are just like, I'm going to keep going no matter what. And for others, it might not, but you can be so connected to your why and why you're doing all of this. For a lot of entrepreneurs, they want the freedom. And so if you're really, really connected to that, 
getting back up is a lot easier. So mm -hmm. I always say, you know, when you get like your fresh notebook or everyone's got their planners for 2020, when you open it up, write your why in big letters because you're not gonna every day feel like you're on the right path, everything's going easy. And I think it can be easy to look at entrepreneurs who are maybe there where you wanna be or have made it. They're having just as many, if not more hard days. And so they need to know their why. I have them all the time. And then sometimes I'm like, why the hell am I doing mm. this? And just connecting back to that really, really helps me get up and be like, okay, let's go, let's keep doing this and remembering the good times as well. So what is your why? My why right now, um, it's kind of twofold. So my why with the company is to impact as many women as possible and show them what's possible for themselves through entrepreneurship. I really believe that we can all create our own visions of success and I want to help them do that. So that's my business why and my personal why is I want to create the best future for like me, my husband, my family, like my future family as well. And that really keeps me motivated. Mm -hmm. And I think your business why isn't always going to be the same throughout your life. It might change. You might close a chapter and open a new one but I think right now my personal why is going to continue to be the same. So what happens when your personal why comes into conflict with your business why? That's a really good question so I've had this happen so many times. Last year it came in like it really happened in a big way where my husband quit his job he wanted to start his own company and I was like yep great we'll 100% support you with that but I need help because I'm traveling around the world doing events for a month it's going to be intense can you come and support so he was around and I had zero time to spend with him you know when you're just so exhausted you have nothing left to give and to try and do it would just be, would really not be an integrity for myself and it caused so much tension between the two of us and he was like I feel like you don't love me you don't want to spend any time with me and what we realized from that is you know not everything is always going to be in balance and yes you might be doing this thing for your family but in order to actually do the thing you're gonna to have to sacrifice something mm -hmm. sometimes and so we really believe in harmony where some months we'll spend so much time together and other months we won't but it's about those conversations you have beforehand and I feel like if I'd really explained to him before we went traveling I'll have no time with you and I'm gonna really need this from you and just was more upfront about it then we wouldn't have had that big argument mm. or arguments um, and so that's what I do now. I say to him, if it's like a crazy week, I, I've got a really crazy week this week. I might need a bit more support. I might be a bit more on the edge or I might not be cooking dinner for us and just setting that expectation. And once he knows that, I feel like he can't come and say, well, why are you not spending time mm -hmm. with me? So it's, it's the balance. Have you always been in tune in that way to be able to articulate to him, hey, I might be a bit off balance myself or I may be agitated or whatever. Have you always been that self-aware? I've been aware, but I had a lot of guilt in that I thought if I wasn't showing up as the best wife and all the things, then there was something wrong with me. And so I know internally, okay, I really just needed him to support me a little bit more, but I wasn't voicing that. So I was showing up at home, exhausted, still trying to cook dinner, having no conversation whilst I'm eating dinner. And he's like, wait, you said you want to spend time with me, but you're not even showing up. Mm -hmm. Whereas now I'm I'm more confident in myself to be able to say, no, I'm not cooking dinner tonight. Or I'm just want to, I want to go and eat on my own. I want to mm -hmm. spend time on my own. But I don't know, it's, I, it's one of those things where you can just feel so much guilt around not doing it or doing it all or being all the things to everyone at one time. Yeah, I mean, God, I have definitely suffered for that when I first started entrepreneurship as well. My husband's like, oh, you're just shipping a couple of bars off the living room floor. <laughs> it's not much, you know, not a big deal. And before I knew it, you know, I had 40 employees underneath me and running our shipping department. Um, but I, I then had to make that transition because I so wanted to be a good wife. And it was very difficult for me to let go because I wanted both. It was like, as much as I didn't enjoy being a housewife, I really did um, want to still be a good wife and support him in the way that he wanted support. And so I really did struggle with the guilt aspect of it. Um, how did you get over that? I think it definitely still comes up for me every now and then okay. where like there'll be times where even with my business partner Danielle will be times where I just feel like I'm not showing up in the best way for her like I might be like busier or I might not be able to like hold space for things she's going through or that kind of thing so it still comes up for me I've really tried to just you know do the do enough inner work that I realize that my worth and my value is not defined by how many hours of work how much time I put in how many things I do for people but actually it just is and I mm -hmm. am and everything else on top of that is a bonus that's one thing that helped and another thing I just had like a really upfront conversation with Steve my husband and I said to him I feel like if 
I'm not doing X, Y, Z, you aren't as attracted to me or you don't love me as much. And I like put my whole self out there mm. crying. And he was, he was just so surprised that I felt that way and really reassured me. And that, it, you know, if it comes up, then I will say to him, I'm feeling that thing again. Can I have some mm-hmm. reassurance? And he'll get, oh, this is just one of her things. I'm going to help her work through it. Yeah. So obviously having somebody that you have that relationship with that you can be that honest about is important. Um, and you actually said um, in future, our family in the future. So do you plan to have children? Yes, I would love to. And so have you thought through how you have this juggernaut of a company that you're running, um, have a husband that you love and want to be there for, and then also having a family? I have, but I feel like you never really know until it happens. And there's part of me that's like, it's going to be easy. And then I think there's just the other part of me that's like, you can plan as much as you want, but until it happens, you just don't know what it's going to be like. Mm So, I mean, who knows? I'm, I think my goal really would be able to step back a little bit because mm-hmm. I don't think we'll have kids for another three to five years, probably. So I would like to be able to step back from the business a little bit. So I'm not feeling like there's so much going on. But who knows? I'm really open to what could happen in that time. Yeah, if you haven't planned your Q4. Exactly. Yeah. Who knows? Yeah. And it's quite nice to just like, that's one of the things that I'm working on. I am a Capricorn, hence would like a Capricorn <laughs> child. But that in the past I've been so planned about everything but I realized that's not the way that I need to be and I can like take my foot off the gas Mm -hmm. and not plan everything so that's what I'm working on. How did you get to that point because my guess is and I'm just from the things that I've heard in our discussions that you seem like you're a perfectionist you take your shit seriously and you know your numbers and you are very deliberate in everything that you do and yet I have a quote from you about being imperfect when I look in the mirror, the scars and acne on my skin reflect back to me the lessons I've learned in loving myself. They tell a story about the journey my mind and body have been through in the past few years. They solidify the knowing that I am strong, committed and beautiful. So I love that you said that. And that's where I wanted to take going from business to health is that your health hasn't been perfect mm-hmm. like mine. And so how do you look at the um, innate thing that that is in you, right? You're always looking for perfection in your business and then finding that you don't have the control in your your body and how it's reacting to it and then looking at it like a beautiful thing because it seems like it's the opposite way that you normally think. Yeah, so this is such a good question. There's so many ways I can take it. I think the first thing was I had such a turbulent childhood that I felt like I had to control everything that was my safety and so that kind of became my like my right hand that's the way I would do everything and scaling a business I mean a business is a life of its own and especially when you start hiring team as well you realize you can't control every single detail otherwise you can't scale and the health thing I it completely changed my life to go through while I'm still on the health journey but to go through it because you're totally right. I, I'm very used to, like with business, it does come pretty naturally to me. I know if I take one and two, it makes three. I just do all these things and then I get what I want, tick, done. Whereas with my health, you know, things really started going wrong and I started seeing a lot of things that I need to work on. So I'm reading every single book you can imagine. I make a full list of all the things I need to do. And my assumption was, great, when I get to the bottom of that list, I'm healed, I'm good. <laughs> like, that's, that's just how I think. Mm. I never see like problems like that. And it was real a real wake up call to get to the bottom of that list and see that I hadn't gotten where I wanted to be. I was like, why? like, why I don't understand. And that was a lot of, like, I had to do a lot of work through that. So I started to let go of control a lot. Um, So one thing that came up when I was doing all this work on my health was that everything was so controlled. I would not deviate off the path. I would take my supplements very specific times. If I forgot, I would give myself a hard time. Everything had to be a certain way. And I wasn't really letting go and just letting, letting things happen. And I just realized if I'm, I need to have more compassion with myself on this healing journey because I just needed it. So it's letting go, not being so strict on my diet, like being more playful, being more fun. That was one side of it. Mm -hmm. And another, another side is I love trying things like breath work, meditation, um, plant medicines like there's lots of different things like I'm, I'm willing and open to trying everything right and so one thing that came through to me I think it was in a, in a breathwork session was just my inner child and just the amount that that 
it, my inner child went through. And I just, in that moment, had so much compassion. And I just thought about like the way I am now, looking in the mirror, give myself a hard time about my skin. How is that making myself feel any better? If I'm already giving myself a hard time about it, you know, I'm probably sending myself into more stress, which is gonna make my skin even worse. Mm -hmm. Like, what about that little girl inside of me that that just needs someone to like love her and and give her some like nicer words and things like that and that's how it all started for me so a lot of the kind of self-development work but I think being so controlling up to a certain point served me really really well because I don't think I would have created what I've been able to create and then now being able to do it from a different place you know the business side is different with a team it's completely different to the way I built it and then health side as well is I'm doing things totally differently yeah wow um that was really powerful and we spoke about this briefly on our entrepreneur panel that we did together um, but I want to go deeper because I really struggle with advice to give people right because if they're just starting out their journey what do you tell them because in hindsight me too I think I'm sick because of how hard I went at the beginning of the company so I think I had like you, I was very restricted on my diet. I worked just crazy hours. I was not taking care of myself. Sleep was like the first thing to go. And now studies have shown that sleep is the most important thing along with nutrition to your health. Um, but I, I was gr down in the grind, right? And I think because of that is partly why I'm so successful. But because of that also is exactly why I'm sick. So yeah, what advice do you have there? It's a hard one. I also sit with this question a lot when I think back to the amount of all night as I pulled, the amount of stress that I went through. But I do think stress is something that we can change our relationship with. Mm. And if I was to go back and do it all again, I probably would change a few things. And I think one of them would be sleep. Like sleep is so important. And I think getting an extra few hours of sleep is not going to really fundamentally make you less successful. So I think sleep's super important. I think stress management. I think there's lots of people online sharing their amazing morning routines, evening routines, boundaries, all of these things. But you're right in the beginning, sometimes you don't have the luxury of saying no to all these things or taking a two hour bath in the middle of the day, right? Mm -hmm. But stress management is something that I think we can all control. If you can take 20 minutes a day to do meditation, I think that would be really, really powerful. If you can work out, even if it's a 20 minute workout, but moving your body, that's stress management. If you can take your supplements, maybe just think about the things that would help you manage your stress and stay balanced, really maintaining a solid energy level. I think that's the key. And I have a new calm device. So it's just a little device. You put it here um, and it like, and that's just on, on your like wrist. on an acupuncture point on yep. your wrist and you listen to binaural beats and you can you can um, simulate a 90 minute REM cycle in 20 minutes what and so it just puts your body into the most relaxed state like that so you know um I'm like a super biohacking nerd me so. too and that's why I freaking adore you one of the many reasons but keep going because this is so, fascinating you know the muse headbands where you put it on yeah. and you're meditating and it'll give you birds if you're doing well and it'll give you different sounds oh, if no. you're not it measures your brain waves so you can see okay I just meditated for 20 minutes and of those 20 minutes I had five minutes of being relaxed which would be you know pretty normal where if you wear one of these headbands whilst you do your new calm you have if you're doing 20 minute session probably 19 minutes and 50 seconds of pure relaxation your, your brain and body is relaxed wow. and is in healing mode and so that's been an, that that is like an extravagant example of how i would really calm my body down especially during events like you can just meditate you can do other things but that's been a game changer so i'm always seeing how i can find little things like that that really train my body to be able to hold more energy mm. because we do have a lot of energy going on but also to just calm my body down mm. and make sure i realize if i'm in stress mode or if i'm not because sometimes it just takes you to sit on your own for 30 minutes no distractions for you to realize wow I was actually feeling really really overwhelmed an hour ago or there was too much energy an hour ago and now I feel good hmm. so I love little hacks like I that. love that a little cold shower in the morning okay do you do cold showers not every single morning but sometimes in the morning um, I think walking outdoors there's just something about being outside in nature 
I think even when you're you know having the craziest time if you can go for a one hour walk or hike outside you'll probably come back feeling so much better and more connected mm -hmm. I love things like that Be before you go on because I feel like you've got amazing tips so I want to talk about the the um, walking outside okay. thing is it started to read more recent studies saying that just being outside even if the sun isn't out and it's like overcast is so good for your health and actually stripping off as much clothes as you possibly can so it's actually skin con contact and for your eyes to actually see the daylight. So I'm fascinated with Yes, that. I so agree with that. I really notice difference if I travel, like if I go back to Europe, if I just go outside first thing in the morning, like, you know, if you've got like a little sundress on, you like actually have no sunglasses on, which mm -hmm. seems crazy, but you're there for 10 minutes, you just feel so much better. I, there's so many gadgets and tech and tools that you can use, but I mean, oh, a simple walk, that's amazing for you. Right. These are so useful and like the, the thing that I really wanted to do as with the show and then just you, this episode with you specifically is tactics. Yeah. I want people to see that you're not accidentally right the CEO of you know Boss Babe. That is very deliberate. Boss Babe is not tiny. That is very deliberate. So your success has been very deliberate. But then also so is your health um, things in trying to fix it. Yeah, it's super deliberate. Every, I, I feel like you have to be, you have to be really intentional about what you're doing because I don't know, you can stop doing things with intention. You'll wake up in three months and be like, what the hell did I just spend my last mm -hmm. three months doing? Yeah. I mean, for me, it's just really, really important. Those are things that I love. Um, I also have a red light. So I'm okay. a big fan of just like trying to biohack whilst I'm being efficient. So... <laughs> Which is the best time to a, do it. I have a Juve red light. And some of these things are investments, but also it's it's about starting slowly, right? Like if right. you're not willing to go for a 20 minute walk a day or you're not willing to sit in silence for a 10 minute meditation, don't go and invest in these devices because if you can't do it for free, spending money on something is not going to make you do it. People think I just need the tools. No, you don't. You, so you don't think the pressure of the fact that you spent money on it will force people to do it? I don't think so. Interesting. I mean, I really don't think spending money on the tools until you start to get in the habit of maybe 20 minutes of self-care a day, 30 minutes a day, whatever it is, then I don't think you will do it. But I have a red light on my desk and I try and do like 10, 20 minutes a day. It's just, it's like a charger for yeah, your what cells. what is a red light then? It just really is so, so good for your cells. Um, I mean, it's great for your skin as well, but it's just like, kind of like a human charger. You can think about, you know, you plug your iPhone <laughs> in. That's how I think about the red okay. light. Okay. Um, so talk to me now, what is the challenge that you're going through? Um, health and business. And then what is your strategy to try and overcome it? Because I love seeing these are all the things you've done that worked. And now, just like anything, you're human, you're always trying to adapt and grow. So what does that next thing look like for you? So um, we obviously had our podcast and we were talking a lot about health stuff. And so just for context for everyone, I was on birth control for 10 years and I started taking it when I was 16 because I never really got my period. And I went to the doctor and I was saying, I'm not really getting a period, what's going on? And they said, okay, birth control is gonna fix it for you. And I went on birth control and I trusted that. I thought that would be the best way. 10 years later, I just had so many things, like so many health things, my digestion, everything, my energy levels, like it just didn't feel right. And I was going to the doctors and ruling out every single thing it could possibly be. And the only thing left was the pill, what I was taking. And so I decided, okay, I'm gonna come off the pill and let's see what happens to my health. And so I came off the pill and I never got my period back and my skin started flaring up. I got acne. Um, I, my, my hair started falling out. I just felt so bad. Like I would, I'm honestly not that much of a crier and I was crying constantly. Mm -hmm. And so I went to the doctor. I said, what's going on with me? And it turned out I had polycystic ovary syndrome, which is where you get cysts on your ovaries. Your hormones are totally off balance, all of the things. And it really impacts uh, fertility. And so that's when I got to my checklist. I'm like, great, I have a name for what I have. All I need now is a checklist that I'm gonna win. And so that didn't happen. And it, uh, it had been a year and a half and I had seen no progress, like not even a little bit. Did you change other aspects of your life? Everything. Really? I changed everything you can imagine. I worked less, I changed my whole diet. I worked out in different ways. Like I did everything by the book and and I see no results mm. and that that was one of those examples of like you can be working so hard and doing all the right things and still feel like you're failing and not really know what to do and it's that you've still got to remind yourself of your why and why it's important for you to keep going and working on it and for the last two months I've had my period perfectly. Oh my god! 
So I finally have gotten oh my there. God, I know. I'm so happy yeah, for you. So that's been huge Holy for me. Holy crap. What was that thing? Or you just think it was consistency and um, diligence? Like what would you say were the keys to getting it back? I think uh, probably a lot of the things that I did, mm. like a lot of the things just diet, exercise, um, a lot of the biohacking things, meditation, reducing stress. Um, I did like a detox of my of birth control of my body. Like I did everything. So I don't know which thing I would mm. attribute it to, but I oh, also did everything. a lot of the inner work too. Mm. Like I worked through a lot of trauma, a lot of like all the things that we're just storing that we don't even know is there. Mm. I was like, oh, whatever is there, I want to clean up through Did you everything. go to therapy for that? Yep, I had okay. a therapist. I did everything you can imagine. Um, and so I think it's been that whole thing. So that's been absolutely incredible. So for anyone listening who's going through anything like that, I know it's really, really difficult, but just know like it will come. Just really, really stick with it. There were times where I was like, I'm going to just, I, I can't do this anymore. Like I want to just go back to doing things the way I was and I'm glad I didn't. So that's been a big thing, but it's still an ongoing thing, right? Like I still have to continue to work on this. I'm not completely healed, but I know I can be. And so I'm still working on that. Yeah, me and you, this is another thing that we just connected over immediately is that I still haven't had my period. Same thing, went off birth control. I went to the doctors. They told me I had polycystic ovary syndrome. I, like you, was like, I've got an answer. I've got mm -hmm. a name to it. Like that, there's just something emotionally satisfying about knowing what it is versus the unknown. And the doctor came to me and said, oh, so, um, so you haven't had your period, but I, I read here that you don't want children, so you don't have to worry about the cysts on your ovaries. And I was like, say what? Like, I shouldn't worry that I've got cysts on my ovaries and I'm not getting a period. Like, that doesn't seem right. And then I started to realize, actually, that explains why I'm fatigued. And so I, that then led me to go and getting my own test done with my own hormone level. Come to find out I actually don't have polycystic ovary syndrome. They misdiagnosed me. And it's the connection between the brain and the body. Mm -hmm. And my body thinks it's postmenopausal. And so I'm really trying to work on that mind and body. And that is actually where I'm focusing on making sure that I'm taking care, like you were saying, of the stress. Um, and a thing for me, if you're sharing, then I'll share too, is that um, we've you know, been working out of our house for the last three and a half years. We've built this company. And thanks to you and some other very close friends, you guys have really hit me hard on the fact that my lifestyle isn't conducive to me getting healthy. And thanks to your honesty and, you know, really saying it to my face, um, I have gone and bought another house. And so we're moving out. That is so amazing. It's going to be weird. We're still going to be running the company here, but having my own space. Um, and it's when you actually said it when I, before I even really knew you. And yeah. I think that that also encourages me to be honest with other people when, even if I don't know them very well, I think to myself, wow, remember how much you impacted me and I want to like pass that on. But anyway, so thank you for that, girl. I love that. And that's so exciting that you have a place that you can actually really separate from work now as well. Mm. I think that'll be a game changer. Yeah. Um, and so talking about separating from work, how do you and Stephen do that um, when you're at home or you're on vacation and um, you're trying to be with each other and, you know, I mean, you're running a massive business and I know he's extremely successful. So you've got these two alpha people who are crushing it in their work game and now you put them on vacation and go. Yeah, <laughs> the golden question. So we didn't used to be very good at this. We used to talk business and work 24 seven. That was just what we did. Um, and we kind of the same had the realization that we need to be able to leave work at the office sometimes and really not have that conversation. So we have a full cut off at normally 7 p.m. And we just hold each other accountable to that. So mm -hmm. if he's talking business, I'll say I'm not available for this. And if, if I'm doing the same, he'll say the same thing. And it's about really respecting that. Mm. I, I love business. So sometimes he can, he can like say something to me and I know I internally I want to get excited about it and talk about it, but it's just not good for my health to, to be doing that. Mm. And so I will just vocally say, I am not available to talk business. Can you write this down or text it to me and I'll see it in the morning? God, sorry, I don't mean to interrupt you, but I want to know how you do that. So yeah. you love it. Because it's not even like, oh my God, it's another drain. I you love freaking it. love it. But you know it's not good for your health. So how on earth, in those moments, do you say your health, your health, your health? Like how do you step? How do you stop? Because if you love it, why wouldn't you do more of it? Yeah, because it's just that thing. I could just do it. For, I could do it all the time. I could do it forever. But just knowing that, I just feel like 
marriage, health, like life outside of work and business is so sacred and important that I try and remember that in that moment. Like this can wait, okay, this can wait. And that's when I'll say it. And he normally knows like, oh God, yeah, like I, I feel the same way I overstepped that or vice versa. Mm. And we'll literally just write it down or he'll text it to me that I'll see the next day because I won't be on my phone. That's also another thing. So we have phones away, okay. which was also really, really hard. I had so much FOMO about what was going on in Slack and emails and all that stuff. And we just put phones away. That's been really, really good for us. Um, and then we also, so we have an Asana, you know, Asana. Yeah. So we actually have a joint Asana for both of us. Oh, for your relationship? That's amazing. <laughs> so Can you just explain for people in case they don't know what Asana is? So Asana is a project management tool that helps you manage your projects, your amazing. business. So we use it at Boss Babe for all the different projects and departments that we have going on. And it's so great. And so we decided to set up our own Asana where we would put our, tw- like we put our goals in 2019, 2020 goals, like our joint finances, how we're going to invest our money. What does that look like? What are our, what are our house goals? Like all the different ah. things. And because all, like you and Tom are the same, we see everything as a team. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, everything that we do is team, everything uh, financially pulled together, we invest together, we do everything together as a team. It's never him or me. Mm. It's never you did better that month or you did better. It's, that's how it is. And so we sit together, we set those big goals. And so we know, okay, say it comes November and I've hit all my goals and Steven's struggling with his. Okay, well, I can spend some of my time helping him with his because I've hit mine and, and things like that, even though we work in different industries. So that's one thing we'll put in there. We put in there little things like um, we have a Sunday check-in every single week, 6 p.m., where we sit down and we talk about what the next week looks like. So that's In your relationship, what the next week looks like? Everything. Okay. So it might be like, um, I might say, I'm feeling really exhausted, like I need this this week, or I'm super excited this week, I want to help you more with this, or this how my calendar looks, let's prep meals, let's talk through all of that. I'm going to cook on these days, I'm not going to cook on these days. So it's just done, set, we know what's happening, we'll plan like a date night, that kind of thing. So we do that, then we review all of our like expenses, different things, so really get on it with finances. Then we'll look in the asana. So um, we plan like we, we try and do at least four vacations a year. So all of those are in a sauna. What needs to be done? Where are we going to go? What are the different? And we sometimes get excited about let's list all the countries we want to go to and we'll put it in there and we'll just pick them and plan trips. So we put things like that in there. And that's kind of we did intentionally say, OK, if we can have family systems like this now, then when we have kids, it probably is going to be easier mm-hmm. because the parents that I look at who have systems seem to run things a lot easier. Yeah. So we're doing things like that. But we really just try and see everything as a team. So we do that. And then, yeah, in terms of boundaries, we both just have to be on board. And we talked about what our values are. And it is beyond work. Like we really, really value that sacred time together. We value our personal growth outside of business. So we both love doing personal development work as well. And so it's about those values. And if you're, if one of your values is work, then that's okay mm. to not have cutoffs as well. So I love that. Yeah. Do you leave any time for the unexpected? Yeah, we do. I would say pretty much all weekend. I never work weekends. Like, and you don't plan it. So it's like, we're going to hang out, but we don't know what we're going to do. We'll just see how it goes. Yeah, sometimes we'll plan a dinner or we'll say, let's like, do a hike or something at the weekend or we'll have a party. Um, but very rarely. It's mm. normally like very like last minute. And I, I love that. Yeah. Sometimes we just get in the car, put the top down, like drive, oh. see a view, like see an amazing view, put music on, find a brunch place. Like, yeah. I love that. Yeah, I no I, phones. I no phones. That's what I need to get better at that. I'm not good at it yet. Um, I've started to actually switch my phone off on Sundays. Like I'll post and then quickly switch my phone off. Um, but I, I keep bouncing back and forth. I need to be a little more religious with that. But we are deliberate with our date nights in the sense of I look at the calendar and I see, okay, we've got three weeks in a row where we don't hang out at all. Like he's working, like he actually works way more than I do because I switch off on the weekends. Mm -hmm. He doesn't. And so I then block it and invite him like, date with Lisa and it gets in his calendar and his assistant sees it. Um, And a lot of people ask me like, don't, isn't that taking the romance out of it? And I was like, no. Um, the romance should still be there, right? So it's like when I hang with him, we have the romance or we have the connection. Um, But I don't think planning and thinking strategically is taking it out because otherwise we wouldn't have time together. Again, going back to being deliberate, right? Mm -hmm. If you're deliberate in your business, why wouldn't you be deliberate in your personal life? I totally agree. I think you should schedule everything. Yeah. Like 
put that in because mm-hmm. then if it's in it's it's if someone then says can you do lunch on Saturday you can look and say oh no I'm spending time with yeah. Stephen or whatever then you're not going to do it versus if you never have that time scheduled in lots of things come at you before you know it you haven't spent any quality time together yeah and a hack for not using phone I just leave it at home and then I physically can't use right. it right um girl I could keep talking to you for absolutely ever thank you so much for being on the show what is your superpower though before we leave my superpower right now is not planning everything just allowing I love that um, and where can people find you and Boss Babe? Um, find me on Instagram at I am Natalie, Boss Babe at bossbabe.inc, and you can find us at bossbabe.com. Amazing. Guys, guys, I'm going to go back and rewatch this time and time again and get my notebook because this woman gave so much gold, and that's why I do the show so that I can get guests here and steal all their nuggets of gold. So go check her out, rewatch this episode. If this has brought you value, guys, please, please do subscribe, share it with people. I want to grow this community to be huge. So please do subscribe, and until next time, go be the hero of your own life. Oh, and follow me at Lisa Billiou. Peace out. What up, guys? Lisa here. Thanks so much for watching this episode. And if you haven't already subscribed, click that little button right in front of you. Click, click, click away. We release episodes every Wednesday, so be sure to get notified. Till next time, go be the hero of your own life.